September the 23rd, 1967, the Melbourne Cricket Ground, a crowd of 109,396. The battle between the Tigers and the Cats, with Richmond taking the flag by nine points, Richmond 16, 18, 114, Geelong 15, 15, 105. This is Rod McLeod inviting you to join my fellow 3KZ football commentators, Harry Beitzel, Brian Simmons and myself, for the final quarter of the thrilling 1967 VFL Grand Final. It's underway. Patterson gets the tap down, but no one can get clear with the ball. It's thrown back into the pack. Cluster tries to get in over the top. It can't get it. Eventually comes to Clay. Clay whips the ball out. Out towards that right half forward flank position. Rollison badly out of touch. Couldn't take it. It goes to Ganahane. Ganahane's got it. Runs into goal. Shoots straight across the face of goals. And it's certainly not Paddy Ganahane's day. Straight over and out of bounds. Over in that left forward pocket position. There's the throw in now. The Ruckman move in. Andrews is in the ruck there. Up goes Ronaldson. Gets the tap down. It goes to Bartlett. Bartlett shoots for goal. And has put it through. Richmond 13 15 93. Geelong 13 7 85. And we've only been playing one minute in this, the final quarter of the 1967 grand final here at the MCG. Three Ks there on relay throughout Australia. Umpire Shields moving in again. Up they'll go. A big punch down by Mitchell. Gets it up towards his half forward line. Here's an opportunity for a hand pass over towards Goggin. That pa hand pass came across from Ryan. Gets it back in turn towards Andrews. Andrews had the ball under control. Gets it down to Sharrick. Sharrick's got it. Swings it back. He's met pretty solidly. Down towards the goal square. It'll be over the line and through, I'd say, for one point. So there's a the point to uh, Geelong. They go on now to 13 goals, 8. 13, 8. That'll make them 86 points to Richmond. 13, 15, 93. Seven points the difference after one minute of play. Swift moves in a magnificent drop kick right downfield. Up they go for it. Polinelli's got the chance to recover behind. Over around it for a chain. Kick off the ground by Burke. Puts it in towards the centre. Walker's lost the run of it. Comes to the ground now. A chance here for Hart to get a hand pass out. But it's going to be intercepted by the brilliant Marshall. Tearing his way through right down towards the fullback line. Goes for the kick wide over to where Ainsworth running in for the ball. He won't get to it in time. Polinelli chipping in too. But over the line it goes out of bounds. Up they go. Patterson goes up. But Big Farmer gets a tap down. He'll recover too. Goes after the ball. Well, Go for the hand pass, a long one. Goes straight in towards the centre. Here's the opportunity for Newland to get it out towards Polinelli. And Polinelli has broken clear. A long kick by Polinelli is going up to where Dean races in for the ball. He moves in pretty solidly. Brings that player down to the ground. Umpire Shields has played it the other way. Played it to Dean. Dean goes for a hand pass over to Bergen. There'll be another free kick. This uh, kick uh, coming right down toward the half uh, back flank. And Polinelli takes the mark. He immediately plays on. He's gone for a short pass straight towards the centre and players mark. Clay immediately uh, drop kicks that ball. It's not a good one. It's going to fall short. It fell over the, the shoulder of uh, Goggin, but Bartlett's got the ball. He'll be grabbed when not in possession. Should have been paid the free. He wasn't, and so it goes to Goggin. Goggin immediately goes for the short pass. He's looking up there towards Sherry for coming out strongly as Swift bounces once and then goes for a short uh, hand pass over to Dean. Good football. Dean on the left boot kicks it straight out of bounds and the ball will be thrown in. Here is uh, Farmer and uh, Patterson, both having a battle royal, and the freeze going to Patterson, and Patterson kicks the player on the mark. Very dangerous, this, as Sherrick takes two bounces and then goes for the kick. That's a big one, too. He's looking for Wade, but Wade and uh, Andrews, but Andrews is outmarked by Jewell as Jewell uh, moved across to take the mark easily on his chest. His kick's going to fall short. It's marked by Kloster. Bergen grabs uh, Kloster, and Kloster goes back. As we see the kick coming up now, they're setting themselves for the mark. Nobody can take it. A pink punch Good away time. goes to Dean. Good tactics by the, the Richmond defence. A chance then for Polinelli. Polinelli went hard and it bounced luckily for Burke. Burke's bounced once. He's going for the second bounce and now he's going for his kick. He was bumped as he kicked the ball. Bumped as right, he kicked the right. ball by Goggin. And umpire Peter Shields has paid the penalty downfield. Peter Shields uh, has made some strange decisions in the second half. As the uh, free kick goes up, where it's a beautiful mark by West, he's way up in front of Ganane, and I think it's it Mitchell. Like, isn't it? uh, Mitchell, I think it is Mitchell. Mitchell in that back pocket position will swing it around that outer flank. Comes in for the kick. There's the kick by Mitchell. Down to where Burke's going to go up. But all oh, the little fellow Polinelli came in from behind. There's a hand pass. Puts it over in the direction here of Burke once again. He cops the player coming in from behind. Must get the free kick against Polly Farmer. Polly did everything except ride him face down into the dirt. And Burke will get the free kick for Richmond over on that left half forward flank. Oh, it's a shocker of a kick. 
Almost marked over in that uh, position there. In they come again. Picked up and driven wide towards the line. And over the line it goes. Newland it was. Put it over the line. And out of bounds once again. In they go. Mitchell Farmer up against Patterson. Patterson's the offender on that occasion. It goes to Barry Richardson. He'll turn around. Swing it onto the left boot. Down towards the goal square. But out comes West. And West Miles in front of G'day and has taken a mark in defence. It's going to drop a little bit short, and we'll see it marked there and taken by Newland. Newland goes for the kick. Down towards the centre position. Up goes Perry. Took it over the back of the pack. Couldn't take it, however. Comes to the ground again. Here's an opportunity for Geelong as the ball high in the air. Three wheels up towards that forward pocket position. Punched away from there. Over towards the line. And over the line it goes. And it's out of bounds once again on the right half-forward flank for Geelong. Patterson takes the tap away. Got it out the ball, Richardson. He taps the ball to the ground once, then goes for the big punt kick. Looking down there for Barry Richardson. Up went Richardson. Couldn't quite marked the ball and it's been punched over the line for a throw in. There was a free kick to Mitchell, wasn't paid. The kick off the ground by Mitchell, lands it out in the direction of uh, Goggin with a hand pass uh, back up there to Polinelli. Now Polinelli's gone for a drop kick. It's a beautiful drop kick. It's coming right down to where a chance for Andrews. Andrews taps the ball off, been missed badly by Eels and on the left foot of uh, Jewel it goes straight out of bounds and that was a bad mistake by the Geelong forwards. The ball's high in the air. Up goes Patterson and uh, and Mitchell. Ball comes to ground. Ryan is trying to grab the ball out of the pack. He can't get it. It goes to Brown. Brown's kick is going to be marked by Polinelli. And Polinelli has been a winner all day for the, for the Geelong side. Bang. What a beautiful kick to Farmer. Farmer's missed a mark, I think the first in his life. It hit him on the chest and hit him so hard, he dropped it. It's going back toward Richardson. Barry Richardson, this is. He's uh, playing the ball around. He plays beautifully as he balks. Gets it on the right boot. Looking up here for Ganane. Ganane's trying to push and shove. Ball comes to the ground. It's danger here as it uh, goes back toward Ganane. Ganane throws it away. It comes back here to West. West gets it over to Ainsworth. Back to Marshall. Marshall drifting right down there into the back line. Has kicked it out of bounds. 13-15, 93 of the Tigers. And they're leading as Bartlett gets the ball over to Brown. Brown, sorry. <laughs> Uh, Brown uh, stays for that one and Peter Shields gave it to him as he moves in to kick this one Geelong 13 8, 86 and it's on its way it's going to fall short up go the big fellas touch through for a point and the score is now Richmond on the 3KZ scoreboard 13 16 94 Geelong 13 8, 86 kickoff puts it into the centre taken by Walker his long kick is up towards centre half forward up they fly and this will be Ryan with it going up Ryan. for that mark Ryan at centre half forward has taken the mark only a matter of 35 yards out and on not much of an angle practically dead in front kicking towards that punt road goal there's the kick by Ryan it's a goal it's a goal so Geelong now they go they're catching up they go under 92 points that'll make them 14 goals, 8, 14, 8, 92 to Richmond, 13, 16, 94. And it's only two points of difference here at the MCG in the 1967 BFL Grand Final between Richmond and Geelong. Umpire Peter Shields in charge of the match. Moving in now, ready to kick it off. And they've been playing just on 10 minutes. The bounce of the ball, and in they go, the big fellows. Big punch out to Patterson. Shark straight in the centre though for Geelong. Nicely here by Polinelli. His kicks up towards the centre half forward position. Scooped over the back of the pack. No one can take the ball. Goes to Ryan again. He's got the opportunity. Moves in. Here's his way through. Lines him up. Shoot for goal. And is completely offline through for one point only. And it's only one point the difference after 11 minutes of play in the final quarter. Swift is going to kick towards this northern flank. Now he's not straight down the centre. Another magnificent drop kick into the centre. Could have been a free kick against Farmer then as it goes back down in the direction of Eels. He's got the ball down towards the full four position over the head of the players. It'll beat them, I think. I don't think it is. I think it ran through first. It ran through first. A desperate attempt to kick it off the ground. Derek was the player, but he tried desperately to get to it, but it was rolling end over end and through, and it's even the score. So it's 14 goals, 10 to 13, 16, 94 points each on the 3KZ scoreboard as the kickoff brings it in towards the centre. Up goes Farmer, goes for the hand pass out to Mitchell. Geelong into attack once again, and this time at centre half forward, they've found Eels once again. Here's Eels' kick. It's a torpedo punt kick. It's going to be offline for one point only, but Geelong are in front by one solitary point. 14 goals, 11, 95 points, Richmond, 13, 16, 94, 12 minutes into the last quarter, swift, readable kick, yeah. right down towards the centre, up goes Farmer, taps it away, it comes to Perry, Perry uh, is, uh, has the ball intercepted, but it goes to Bartlett, Bartlett grabs, when he grabs the ball, he's grabbed again, he's still allowed to punch the ball away, it comes toward Newland, Newland takes it away from Barrett, long hand pass over towards Goggin, uh, Goggin's following that ball on with Burke on his hammer, 
And there's his kick. It's going to go toward uh, uh, a little uh, uh, Colonelli. Colonelli is looking for Sherrick. Sherrick slips over at the crucial moment. Two Richmond players three. upset each other. It goes to Eels. Eels drop kick toward goal. He should have looked for a player. And Eels has kicked it out of bounds. Ball out of bounds, a yard away from the behind post. Up go the big fellas. It comes out to Ryan. Ryan with a left boot. And it's either a, a miraculous mark or a goal, one of the two. And it's a mark to Dean. And he's electing to kick out uh, there, and he goes for a short pass toward uh, Swift. Swift hasn't got it. Uh, Swift runs onto the left boot. He gets it down towards the half-back flank. Here Spring comes bursting down here. Right down to Lord Ward uh, Brown. Uh, Brown uh, takes the ball away from Marshall. Hand pass to Barrett is dangerous. Barrett's bounced twice. Three times and running the wrong way. Now he goes on with a kick. And Rosenau up in front. Didn't take the mark. He's uh, down on the top. There's a chance for Ganane. And it'll be bounced by umpire <coughs> Peter Shields. Well, Rosenau had his chance to mark the ball then. He couldn't do so. And the ball's been bounced 25 yards out from the Richmond goal. It's one point the difference. And it's bounced down on the deck. Up goes Rosanel and Ronaldson. Ronaldson got the tap away. Comes to Brown. Brown to Hart. Good football. Hart on the left boot. He's kicking right up towards uh, Ganane. Ganane has Green. the ball punched away. It's not through yet. Although the goal umpire is coming out. The goal umpire wants the all clear. And the beautiful piece of play uh, by Richmond, uh, by uh, the Geelong defence, but it was through for one point. Richmond 13 17 95. Geelong 14 11 95. West is kicking in. That's a right uh, foot drop kick. He's looking over there for Mitchell. Mitchell can't take it, but Farmer does. And then a long hand pass over to Polinelli. Polinelli has got the ball under control. He goes for the right foot kick. It's not a good one, but it comes out towards Sherrick. Sherrick has gone for the big kick towards the big sticks. He's driven it home, and he's driven it through from the half-forward flank. And Geelong are a goal in front. Geelong 15-11, 101. Richmond 13, 17, 95, and Sherrick has kicked another goal to make his total to this stage four for the day. 109,396. This is a record since reserve seats have been sold and a record aggregate for the four matches here at the MCG. The ball back with umpire Shields in the centre, Brian Simmons. Geelong have got their tails in the air and Richmond are definitely rattled. Back in the centre of the ground. There's the bounce right in the centre. Up they go. It's tapped down by, Ma uh, by uh, Mitchell. But it right into the arms of Barry Richards and he can't break clear of the pack. He finally grabs the ball. Still got possession of it. Down to the centre half forward position it goes. Over the heads of the players. Ganane cannot pick up the ball. Handball's over to uh, Bartlett and his kick went right along the ground and over the line and out of bounds. There's the ball thrown in. Here's a chance there for Geelong to clear the ball through Mitchell. They do so back into the half-back line and down comes Kloster and he marks the ball for Geelong on the half-back flank. Kloster for Geelong. Coming around the members' side, using a drop kick back into the centre wing. It goes, players right, and it goes over the line and out of bounds. Right in front of the members' stand. Into the, into the air it goes. Patterson takes the ball out of the air for Richmond. It's caught immediately. In comes Marshall of Geelong. Puts it onto a right boot. Down to the centre half forward position it goes. A uh, chance there for Richmond to mark which they do. Through Strang. Strang with the ball bounces once. Puts it onto a right boot down into the half forward flank position. Up they go. Jules uh, Ronaldson tries to mark the ball. Couldn't do so. In comes West. And his kick goes right out of bounds on the half back flank. Geelong are in front by one goal. 101 to 95. Up they go, it comes to ground, forced back into the centre wing, Kloster going after the ball, Patterson is hotly in pursuit, but Kloster's first to the ball, slams it down to the centre-half forward position, but a good mark has been taken by Strang at centre-half back. Strang of Richmond will turn out another strong Geelong <laughs> attack, favours a pun kick, it's a good one too, right down to the centre-half forward position, players rise but no one can mark the ball, a golden opportunity for Richmond as they put it over onto the half-forward line, and Ronaldson marks! Ronaldson of Richmond is marked on the half-forward flank a good 50 60 yards out from goal he's right on the boundary line there's his kick it's a pretty good kick it's a goal there's no worries about it a glorious goal kick by Ronaldson and the scores are level the scores are level Richmond 14 17 101 to 15 11 101 Geelong 3KZ Melbourne's top football station relaying throughout the Commonwealth Back to the MCG. Where the bounce of the ball has taken place. In the centre, Richmond desperately trying to get it away. No one can break clear with it, however. And that player on the field there is Perry. Jay Perry is on the ground. The ball goes out wide, out towards Polinelli. And Polinelli has taken the mark for the Cats. His kick down towards the full forward position. Up goes the pack. No one can take the ball at the back of the pack. It goes through to Perry. This is Mike Perry. Couldn't get away with it. Down on the ground. Here's a shot. Line up. A shot for goal. 
Arrow through for one point only. And Geelongo, one point ahead. 15, 12, 102. To Richmond, 14, 7, 101. Wade was the player who had the snapshot. There's the kick by Swift. Right down into the centre. There's pushing and shoving going on. It could have been a free kick to Barrett. It is against Marshall. He was being interfered with while the ball was still on its way in the air. And Barrett will drive it right down towards... No, he doesn't. It's a poor kick for him. It's going to drop short. It'll find Northey. And Northey juggles it once over on the right half forward flank. And is going to now play on. Right down towards the goal square. The pack are going to fly for it. Up goes Ganane. Couldn't take it. It comes to the ground again. In comes the brilliant play here of uh, Geelong as it comes back in the direction of Closter. That came from Goggin. Down towards the wing position. Up they go. No one can take it. It goes to Andrews. He drops the ball when tackle. Comes to the ground. The free kick going Richmond's way. And it's going to be taken by Tony Jewell on the right half forward flank. The kick is high in the air. It's a poor one. That's not what they want. Up goes Bartlett and Bartlett is marked. Out at centre half forward, kicking towards the railway or the scoreboard end of the ground. The Good. kick right down towards the goal square. It's going to drop short, however. Chance there for Rosnow. Couldn't take it. Ganane turns over. And again, a right off line, over the line and out of bounds. It's one point the difference here. Richmond 14, 17, 101. Geelong 15, 12, 102. They've been playing 20 minutes into the last quarter. Uh, this ball is out of bounds right next to the behind post. And here's Rod calling possibly his last piece of play for 67. Up they go. The big tap down comes straight to the front. A chance for North. He couldn't get away with the ball. Umpire Shields moves in quickly. He sees the ball being pulled out of the pack and is going to bounce at a matter of 15 yards out from the uh, Richmond goal. There's the bounce of the ball. It favours Farmer. Farmer goes for the tap down over to Bartlett. He's run into trouble. Grab we're not in possession and played against him for dropping the ball. Comes wide over towards the front of the members' stand. Up they'll go here for it. The ball being held and pulled. And it's going to be a free kick to go to Cluster. Over on this right half-back flank. Or the left half-back flank it is. In front of the members' stand for Geelong. It's a kick now by Cluster. Goes up around the wing. Up they rise for it. No one can take it. It comes down on the head of the players. And over the line. And out of bounds once again on this centre wing. After 22 minutes. The throw in again. Patterson goes up. He's trying to pull it down and bring it down every time. Luckily, this occasion, he gets uh, interfered with. The man came in from behind, Andrews. Goes for the kick. It goes to Goggin, and Goggin will take plenty of time as he just skips back, wait for someone to move into position further up, and now he does. Goes for the kick around the wing position. Up they fly. No one can take the mark. It goes through towards Gareth Andrews. He's almost tripped. Puts the ball to boot. Up towards centre-half forward. The pack there are waiting for it. Up they rise. Punched away to the front of the pack again. Here's an opportunity. It looks like Strain coming through to relieve the pressure, which he does to centre-half forward. Up they rise. Hart's brought it down. Hart has brought down a miraculous goal. A miraculous mark, I should say. It was in the finger, just a little bit of play, and then I'll be down to the dressing room. Which one I go to, I don't know. There's the kick. Down towards the full forward position. Up goes Gadeen. And Gadeen has taken a mark from behind, right over the front. He's 30 yards out from goal, directly in front. Can Paddy make amends for the day? Geelong 15, 12, 102. Richmond 14, 17, 101. One point the difference. Ganane comes in. There's the kick. It's through for one point only. And it's even, Stephen. 102 points each as we'll head for the dressing rooms. And West about to take the ball into play. He's taking his time as he moves down. And there's his kickoff. It's a right foot drop kick. It's falling short. Oh, Hart has taken a ripper. Hart has got up right over the top of Walker. He was head, short, head high on Walker and has taken a mark at centre half forward. Royce Hart, the 19 year old wonder for the Tigers, sends up to where up goes Ganane, but it's Mitchell to take the mark. Mitchell uh, kicks into the player in front of him, Big Ronaldson. This is dangerous as it's kicked across in the direction of. Uh, Northey, Northey has the ball taken away from him. In the back it is. But umpire Peter Shields says I'll bounce it. Umpire Shields is bouncing the ball uh, 25 yards from the Richmond goal. And it's uh, even Stephen, 102 points each. Up goes uh, Farmer. Farmer's uh, definitely cramped badly. Kick off the ground there, desperate. And here's a chance for Clay. Clay's got the big show. He runs around an opponent. He runs around two opponents. He's got the ball on its way. Up they go. Ainsworth knocks it away. It's a chance for Hart. He steamrolls. Jesse about to take the kick. The ball's on the ground. Newlands gets it. Newlands can't get his kick. And the ball's taken over the line. It's been thrown in. It's 30 yards from the Richmond goal. Uh, uh, Farmer has the free kick given against him. And Farmer cannot get off the ground. Free kick's been played against him to Ronaldson. Ronaldson is on an angle. He's already kicked a remarkable goal from the opposite uh, flank. There is the kick. It's on its way. 
going to fall short. But it went over the heads of... Uh, it fell short. It's a goal. A goal to uh, Richmond. 15-18, a total of 108 points. But there, through sheer tiredness, both uh, West and Rosenau could have taken that mark. They misjudged it. It went uh, between them. Through for a goal. Richmond's one goal in front. Geelong, 15-12-102. The ball is bounced. It's uh, knocked away by Mitchell. And here's a free kick. It's a charity free kick to uh, Farmer in the centre of the ground. Farmer had no intention of going for the ball then. There's a kick by Farmer. It's going on up to the hard forward flank. Nobody can take the mark. Opportunity here for Goggin. Goggin uh, runs around and then gets a hand pass into Eels. Eels is in a lot of trouble here. He doesn't know what to do. He goes for his kick. He's flattened up. He goes for it. And the penalty will go further afield. And Sherrick will take the free. No, it's not going to Sherrick. It's going to go to Graham. They've been playing 25 uh, and a half minutes. Graham moves in. He's offline. One point only. And it's five points of difference. Here is a kick in. Oh, it's a beautiful kick. And it's found uh, Patterson. And Patterson's going back for his kick. There's five points of difference. As up goes Farmer. He can't take the mark. It's uh, desperation as Farmer falls over the ball. He's holding on to an opposition player. It comes to ground. It's coming over the direction of Richardson. Richardson back uh, to uh, Clay. Clay back to Richardson. And Richardson now sending forward for Richmond. They're finishing the stronger. Up goes Ganane. He can't take the mark. But Northey's got it. Northey's tapped it on in front of him. Being held. Kicks the ball across the face of goal. And it's out of bounds. The ball about to be thrown in. Comes down in the direction now of the two Richmond players. Oh, good play, Bartlett. Bartlett came back. Bounced his way off, kicked the goal, and Richmond may have won it. They've gone to 16 goals, 18, 114. Geelong are 15, 13, 103. The ball's bounced in the centre. Back here we see Patterson getting the tap away. Graham's trying to get towards uh, Barrett. Barrett's playing the ball on in front of him. Barrett's run right back toward the half-back flank position. Now he's got his kick. Back toward the centre. Here's a chance for Farmer. Farmer's up, and Farmer has taken the mark. Quickly plays on. Gets it down to Kloster. Kloster's long drop kick. And here they set themselves for the mark. Up goes Wade. He can't take it. It's all Richmond down there. They defend strongly. A big hand pass. It comes back to where there's a chance here for Geelong. But Fred Swift's there. Fred Swift runs around the goal area. He's uh, hanging onto the ball and kicks down. And there's an opportunity now for them to take it away as Perry takes the ball under control. Down to... Oh, beautiful play, Barrett. Ball for round on the moment. Straight to Barry Richardson. And Richardson has marked. Richmond 16-18, 114, Geelong 15-13, 103, 28 minutes into the quarter. Barrett's down with Tramp as the ball from Richardson goes right down where it's uh, not marked by anybody. Farmer runs around on his uh, left hand, goes for the hand pass. He gets it back to West, West over to uh, Farman. Farman looking here for uh, Ainsworth. Ainsworth keeps the ball in play and then with a kick sends it out of bounds. As the, the ball is thrown in, up went Mitchell, got the big tap away, a chance for Marshall. Marshall takes the ball under control, gives a hand pass over to uh, Billy Goggin. Goggin goes for another hand pass back to Graham. Graham to Marshall's good football. Marshall's going to line them up, it's a long kick. He's up looking up here, nobody can take the mark. Yes, I think Andrews maybe played it. He hasn't been played it, play on call the umpire. And it goes to Ryan, Ryan with a left foot kick, and it's through for one point. Richmond could have it thrown up as uh, Freddie Swift uh, kicks over to Patterson and has found Patterson again. Patterson will go back for the uh, big, uh, long kick. There's the kick by Patterson. It's not a good one. Grubs along the ground. However, it's John Perry to come in. The 19th man for Richmond has it underway. Marshall marks in the centre of the ground. Is held on to. Goes back for his kick now. And the precious seconds are ticking away for the Cats. Here's Marshall running around an opponent. Goes for the drop kick. But it's going to be marked by Richmond. No, he mulled it. It comes to Goggin. Goggin's grabs when under pressure. It comes back to Goggin. Goggin's playing the ball on. He must be dead tied. He lines him up now. He's gone for the big one. And he's kicked it. I think he's kicked the goal. No. Fred Swift is marked right on the line. Great play, Fred Swift. It was right on the line. He kicked it out to where Polinelli's gathered the ball in. He's gone for a dash and sends goalwards. And it's through for one play. Siren. Richmond a one. Richmond a one. Richmond won the 1967. 15-15 Geelong finished with 105. 
Richmond were 16, 18, 114. Tigers have won a premiership after 24, after 23 years. It was a scene of wild excitement in the Richmond dressing room straight after the final siren, as you'll hear in these exclusive interviews, as broadcast live by 3KZ. Freddie Swift, a magnificent game, Fred. I know that you're a little bit wound up at the moment. <laughs> How does it feel, Fred? I don't know yet, Rod. It's, it's been fantastic so far. I ran a lap of the ground at the finish, and I'm absolutely... Yeah, I know what you know. mean. Yeah. <laughs> right Righto, oh, Fred. Well, tremendous effort, mate. OK, we'll let you go. You, you're still wound up. Well, I've been here a couple of weeks. Again, two mics here at the moment. We'll see if we can get Tommy Hapey, the quiet man of football, one of them. Tommy, congratulations, Tom. And uh, as the old Severin kid, a very wonderful job. You must be very proud of the boys. Oh, uh, extra, extra, Rod. Terribly pleased. Uh, I've never felt like this before, to be quite honest. And did you think you were going to lose at one stage, mate? Well, uh, at three-quarter time, I still I felt that we were a big show. But... Uh, it was edgy all the way through. I wouldn't like to say at what stage did I think that we were ever going to win it. Tom, as a matter of interest, uh, this could be the start of many big things for the future for Richmond. Yourself, you need a tremendous amount of congratulations uh, for what you've done yourself and the rest of the club. It's been a wonderful effort to come up from where they did to what they are now. Yes, we're very pleased, naturally enough, but uh, we'll wait till we worry about next year, next year, Rod. OK, Tom. You'd like to get back with your boys, would you? Very true. <laughs> Good on you, fella. Billy, how are you, mate? A bit tired, Rod. A bit sore. The a boys, wonderful effort. Yeah, the boys fought all the way right to the final siren, and that's what we've been training through for throughout the year, Rod. What, what's it like to be a premiership winner for, for the first time? Well, it's hard to say at the moment. Don't you think, Paddy? It's uh, hard to believe. It's a reaction, Rod. <laughs> it's been a long time, Paddy. A champion game, Bill. Well, we won played like the bloody <laughs> champion you are. <laughs> Well, never mind, that was direct on air, but we don't care. That's how we feel. Kevin, how are you, mate? Oh, terrifically happy. Fair How are you? Oh, couldn't explain myself. Did, did, you, did you actually think that you were going to win it? Did you think you might have tossed it away at one stage? No, well, all year Todd's been saying that he, he thought that we were the most determined side in the lead, and, and the, the way it turned out, I think it showed we were to come back after being down in the third quarter. Well, you were, you were nice and uh, determined early on the piece, and I think this is what gave you the good grip on the game at the start. Yes, but then they fought back tremendously in the third quarter. They came out and they hit us with everything, but I think you know, everyone at Richmond is tremendously pleased that the way we've come back and finally won it. Thank right, you. Congratulations. It'll be a wild old town in the Tiger Town tonight. Good day, Jeff. How do you feel? Oh, terrific. Bloody mighty. <laughs> We're getting a few of these. You're direct on air, you know. Hey? You're direct on air. Oh. <laughs> Never mind. But congratulations, Jeff. Thanks We've had a much. couple of those great Australian eggs at his stream again. Anyhow, all the best to you Thank and congratulations you. for a marvellous win. Mike, the big red fella. How do you feel? I'm pretty uh, tired, Rob. As a, as a matter of interest, is this a, a much greater thrill as far as you're concerned than being in the state side earlier in the year? Oh, it's incredible. It's not a patch on the state side. This is the greatest feeling I've ever had. Okay. Back my mix. Yeah. <laughs> now, careful, fellas. We've been over the air twice. We're direct on air, so be a little bit careful, Barney, what we say. And uh, Premiership, did you think you'd have it all the way through the game? Um, I thought we had it easier than what we did, really. Did you? Yes, I did. And uh, oh, they were worthy opponents, though, weren't they? <laughs> they had us worried. Uh, Tremendous game. Billy Brown? Yes. Oh, I'm tired to speak, I think. <laughs> I'm exhausted, I couldn't do the lap. <laughs> Freddie, Freddie Swift said that it was too much for him. I said to him, I said, you didn't look fit all day, so it must have been that last lap that did it. <laughs> I think so. I, think so. <laughs> I reckon you could go around and run around the roof there, couldn't you, yes, fellas? Yes, I think so. We'll, have to, we'll have to loosen up tomorrow. <laughs> you get into the old... Uh, I'll probably make his train tomorrow morning, too. <laughs> probably would. I don't know if you heard that at all. Royce, congratulations. You found it a bit tougher to get into it today, mate. Oh, it was a bit hard to start off, but I gradually worked the way and I'm not satisfied, as long as we won. A wonderful honour to come into your first season in league football to come up with a premiership. Yes, it was a big thrill. Um, probably it would be the best season that I've had so far. Last year was a good season, finishing off in the reserve for the premiership, but this one it really kept oh, no. the year off. OK, then, thank you very much indeed, Royce. Congratulations. Good day. <laughs> We're on relay, incidentally, up your way, so if you'd like to mention the Xfinity Special Serios, uh, on relay, you're on the air direct at the moment, Dick. Uh, is anybody up in Corbin listening? I'd like to say it's a tremendous feeling. I'd like to send a cheer out to my sister and brother-in-law and my two little nieces. Uh, it's a tremendous feeling. 
it's great. How, do, how does it feel being a wingman after coming down as the boom forward? Oh, in a premiership side, it doesn't matter where you play. It's just great. It's been a big year for you, Dick, and hasn't it? You've yeah. been the state side, you've been in, in a premiership side, and congratulations yeah. for a, a wonderful season. Thanks very much. Good. Okay. Well, we have uh, Johnny Perry and Barry Richardson with us. Well, how do you two feel? Oh, terrific. Never felt anything like it, Pete Hickam. Did you think you were going to get a run? Oh, no, they're all going so well, and no one seemed to be tiring or anything like that. But I'll just to share it with them, even for coming on for a couple of minutes, it was terrific, Pete Hickam. And what, what about you, Barry? I can tell you we were quite sure we were tiring. I thought it was a wonderful game. We were very glad to see Johnny came on, a fresh man. It was good to see him. Most wonderful feeling to win a premiership. Oh, I don't think any words can explain it. Right, oh, Barry. Big Mike Good day, Mike. Yeah. Mike, uh, congratulations to you for, for a magnificent season. You were finding it a bit tough at the start of the year. You won your way into the side and, you, and you've had every minute of it through the premiership. Thanks very much. And uh, your own, uh, how do you reckon you beat them? What do you reckon was the end result? It was a fantastic, the end result. But I think we fought it out all the way. We weren't. We were just not going to def uh, concede defeat at any stage of the match. They got in front. We fought back. I think our greater determination all over the ground. Plus our long kicking won it for us. Okay, Mike. Mike Patterson, thank you. Bob Deggerson, how are you, Robert? Very excited, Rod. Well but worth it. Yes, it was very well worth it, Rod. I'm only sorry for one thing, Rod. The late Len Smith is not here, who started all this to share with us in our joy. Well, this is right. This is something that we mentioned earlier in the day. It would have been a wonderful thing because he's been one of those responsible for the upsurge of Brisbane in recent years. That is very true. He began all this, and we were very lucky to have a good administration led by Ray Dunn, the capable secretary, to follow this through. And I, I think your secretary, talking about your secretary, I think he's even got a smile on his face. Oh, yeah. Graham Richardson, uh, Graham Richardson, you've got me tossed now, Graham. Congratulations. Uh, I personally want to thank you for the assistance you've given me since I've been tied up with football. I, just one take. I think this might be Tommy Hayes. Just I'm taking a little bit of a risk. I'm moving right in amongst the crowd, so you could hear anything at this moment. But I'm trying to see if we can get Tommy. Can I just get through there, chaps? Bring our microphone in. I think we might be lucky. We'll keep quiet now and see what happens. Mr. Ray Dunn is speaking, Freddie Swift and Tom Hafey up on the stand. Now as a gesture of thanks to Tommy Hafey, the coach. He's red the boys. Quiet! Please, please, please. You can hear the excitement. Now, now we want to call for donations. Donations, everyone will be acknowledged. Donations for, from everybody here to give them a chance. $20 from me, $20 from Kenneth and Canelli, $20 from Ron Gallagher. Right, right, right. $120 from the one. From the old player, $120. Now put it in here. Right. $20 from the Well, as you can hear, they're being very well supported. I was hoping that Tommy Hafey would be making a few words. I'm in position waiting for it, but there's not much I can do at the moment. The, uh, they're calling for donations. <laughs> Holding up the VFL 1967 Premiership Cup. Wild excitement down here at the moment. And holding the cup up aloft at this moment. I think there might be a few words from the very quiet man of football, Tommy Hapey, and just a check with those tears in the eyes. Here it is, you can hear the crowd. We want Tommy. This is a word for Neville Crow, incidentally. We want Chloe. Here's Neville Crow coming around. Neville, Neville Crow, a very disappointed player here. 
Uh, but believe me, the money is pouring in here, and they've put it up. They've given good value to Richmond supporters this year, without doubt. Charlie Priestley, how's it, Charlie? Now, be careful, you're on air, mate. I, lovely. I lit this cigar at three-quarter time hoping. <laughs> and we have won it, so now I'm going to smoke the rest of it. I bet you, well, I think you'll do more than that. It's going to be a really wild time tonight, isn't it? Well, now I'm saying... Uh, Good afternoon to Mr Ray Dunn, the president of the Richmond Football Club. Ray, it's been a wonderful honour to yourself and you certainly must be thrilled at this moment. Yes, I'm very thrilled after 24 years of waiting on the committee to at last have obtained a premiership. And did you think you had it all the way through? No, I've never been overconfident at all. I thought it was a great game between two good teams and I think the luck of the game was with us at the finish. And we, I thought we were just the better at the finish, that was all. There was nothing between the teams. Neither side shirked anything. You came at it hard to start, they came at it hard after half time. Yes, I thought neither team shirked in any way at all. I thought they were 18 players, brilliant players on each side, and we just had the breaks at the finish. You want to go through one like that again, Ray? No, I lost 20 stone in the last 10 minutes and put it on again. I think I'll put on 40 stone tonight. Is this the start of big things for Richmond? I think so. I think we've got a good club. We've got four good teams, they're all in the grand final. We've won two premierships out of the four up to date and a chance in the third. And I think we'll have a good team for some years now. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Ray Dunn. Brian Simmons recorded these comments in the Geelong dressing rooms, naturally a scene of much more bitter disappointment. Bill Ryan, Bill, a great game today by you. Thanks very much. It was a tremendous game. It was one of the greatest games I've ever played. I'll never forget it. it Bill, Bill, it was only nine points, but... Uh, Geelong hit the front on several occasions throughout the game and when they had that tremendous burst in the third quarter they looked as if they were going to take it away from Richmond. Yes. Johnny Sherrick come good again in that yeah. third quarter and he slammed in a couple and it was just tremendous, you know, it was just one of those things and just about a side one in a day, that's all I could say, it was uh, just the luck of the game. Still it's one of those things even though you did get beat, uh, you, you don't mind being beat because uh, both sides played so very, very well. Yeah, the crowd loved it, no one left I don't think for the last iron so they must have enjoyed it. Phil, was there any spite in it at all? None, no whatsoever. It's just a good, hard game, and just like all Australian rules football should be, just fast and open. Wayne Kloster, I've got over here. Wayne, bad luck today, but what a great fighting effort by Geelong. Yeah, it's a great game. Tremendous. Wayne, what about your own personal duel uh, in the centre there with Barrett, and then of course you went out onto the onto the wing. Yeah, well Barrett proved a bit strong early. He's a good player. No doubt you're a little bit disappointed on uh, on losing today. Yeah, bitterly. All right, Wayne. Well, I know you want to get uh, dressed so all the best to you. We've got Doug Wade here, the full forward. Doug, can I have a few words with you? Bad luck, Doug, but uh, a, a tremendous game it was. It was a good game, wasn't it? You know, I thought we had him in three-quarter time. Well, uh, th well, that was another th third quarter. I think we spoke about this last week when you uh, uh, hammered Carlton into the ground in the third quarter. You looked as if you were going to go on with it there. Yeah, yeah the Richmond came back, you know. Yeah. They, they, we could never get that break on that we got on Carlton. You know, we were going into the last quarter, they were down, you know. That's right. It's still... Uh, I thought we'd put up a pretty good performance on the day. Congratulations well, to, to Richmond for their flag for you know, so many years. Good on you, Doug. And you kicked, well, you kicked four yourself, didn't four, you? Yes, yes. Well, uh, bad luck you never... I think you could have got one or two more, too, but oh, you missed I a couple of easy ones. A couple of easy ones, yeah. yeah. Bit disappointed missing those early ones. Oh, yeah, I'm disappointed in losing. That's the yeah. thing, but still, that's another year. Yeah. All right, Doug. Well, all the very best to you. There's Billy Goggin over here. If I could have a few words with uh, Billy. Billy, a great game today by you. Uh, you seem to always turn in uh, a first-class effort uh, whenever you play. Yeah, thanks, Rod. Uh, I'm afraid I played to play fairly well. I felt the team all the time played pretty well. We just we had our opportunities. We felt we were going to win it at different stages of the game, but they came back and they were able to get on top of us just at the right time. How do you think the boys felt when they got that couple of goals break in that third quarter? Well, we, we felt we could go on with it, but there, then again, they came back and congratulations to them. They're a good side, the premiers, and uh, there's not much I can say. We've defeated, but I think we're far from disgrace. Yes. Uh, where do you think you... you I don't, don't suppose you can pinpoint any particular spots uh, uh, that possibly let you down, because I didn't think there was any spots that really let you down. I think just the better side won on the day. Possibly so, yes. Yeah. Things just... They got the breaks that were needed to win the game at the right time. That was near the finish. We were in front at different stages of the game, but we just weren't quite good enough, I suppose. You could put it down to that. Uh, Billy, I don't like talking about umpires, but how did you feel about umpire shield? Oh, I couldn't complain about the umpire. I thought he's done a wonderful job right throughout the series. Now, we've got uh, Kenny...
Teddy Mueller over here. Ken, bad luck today. Yeah, it was very unfortunate. Uh, naturally, we're very disappointed, but uh, we're always first to congratulate a, a better side on the day in which Richmond were. And I think perhaps if we'd had a few lucky breaks, which is lady luck in football plays a great part, and I think Richmond got the better, best of it there in the last quarter. Kenny, I'd like to congratulate you on taking the mark of the day. That was a beautiful mark of yours in the third quarter. I... Uh, one of the few, I'd say. <laughs> but uh, I was quite pleased to have taken it. I naturally had to jump on the pack, and I think if you get in that position, the best position you can be in, if you keep your eyes on the ball, nine times out of ten, you will get it. Was that your first grand final? Yes, that was my first grand final. It was naturally the biggest thrill and the, and the biggest disappointment of my football career so far. Nervous before the game? Uh, yes, just a little, but uh, I, I was glad. If I hadn't have been, I'd have been worried, I think. Uh, you must have um, a lot of football in front of you. I hope so. I hope the players, as long as they are captain, which has been a great credit to the game, and I'm alluding to Polly Farmer, never ne never a greater footballer in the history, and I think and he tried his stomach out today for Geelong, and uh, he was a, a great admiration for the club. Kenny, loads of luck to you. Now here's Harry Beitzel to sum up the match and give the vital statistics of the game. Uh, nine occasions in all, it was uh, nip and tuck. It was not until the 24-minute mark that Richmond actually hit the front. It was level with uh, only about seven minutes to go, and uh, we would have had the pleasure of seeing them line up again, and what a great thrill that would have been, because 109,396 people attended the grand final, and that's a record since reserve seats have been booked. The big record was back in 1956, when uh, something like 115,000 people packed themselves into the MCG. It was a fantastic grand final here today. He played at a scorching pace with lightning handball and with the way Goggin and Barrett set the play field, playing field alight, it was jet age football. The Tigers were down on one or two occasions, but they fought back tenaciously and tigerishly uh, to get back in front. Geelong, however, were not to be outdone. At half time, they went in uh, looking as though Richmond had got the uh, flag for 1967 sewn up. The score was 9-10-64 to Geelong 7648 at 16 points of difference and we were wondering whether the Cats could do again what they uh, did last week in the final when they scorched away from Carlton in a vital third quarter and they turned on this champagne football and within the first seven minutes four goals were slammed on and they'd hit the front. It almost looked as though the uh, Richmond side were gone but they steadied and a lucky free for Brown and then Barrett with a great individual effort uh, rest of the lead back for the Tigers. We saw the Geelong backs under pressure, then we saw uh, Geelong rest the lead back again, but eventually it was the brilliant play of Hart up at uh, centre half forward, who is a 19 year old kid, and this has really been his year in league football. Sure, it was a great game. It was co courage uh, shown by players of both sides. Uh, nobody uh, could be said that they showed a lack of courage here today. Every player gave his all for his side. The final stats that you're after is that in the free kick department, Richmond received 44 as against 33 to Geelong. In the last quarter, Richmond received 11 frees as against Geelong's four. And the mark department, 59 to the Tigers, is against 77 uh, to Geelong. And the goal kickers for the day uh, were for the Richmond side, uh, three each to Ronaldson, Royce Hart, Kevin Bartlett and Billy Brown. And one each to Paddy Ganane, Alan Richardson, Barry Richardson and Bill Barrett. Uh, for Geelong, four each to John Sherrick and Doug Wade, which means that Doug Wade finished the season with 96 goals, four short of that very uh, elusive century. Three to Billy Goggin and one each to Andrews, Gordon Hines, Colin Eels and Bill Ryan. And now 3KZ's exclusive instant replay in which you're going to again join in the excitement of the match as both sides kick goal for goal. There's Sherrick's kick. The crowd stand, say it as the goal umpire, and it's a goal through the centre after five and a half minutes of play in the first quarter. Say so the first goal also goes to Geelong. The score is nine points Geelong. Richmond are yet to score as Hart comes in. There's the shot. A deliberate run straight through the centre. And the first goal on the board goes to Royce Hart. One goal, Richmond, and Geelong are on one three. Not Wade's mark directly in front, no hope then for Swift, and he's only 30 yards out. A big kick coming up for Geelong and Wade, and Wade moves in right in front. On its way, and it's a goal. 
Geelong second goal, two goals, three. Fifth. Harry's in there, up there is the pack. Patterson trying to get it. Oh, and Goggin, magnificent football, breaks out of the pack. Beautiful play then. Broke out of the pack, put it to boot and straight through the centre from that half forward line. That was campaign football. And by Richardson, according to umpire Shields, and Richardson uh, from 35 yards out. Richardson comes in, favours a punt kick, and it's straight and through. A lovely goal. Richmond's second goal on the board from a free kick. At a very acute angle as Brown moves in, drives towards the goal. He's kicked it. It's through to Richmond's third goal and two from free kick. It comes back to Ainsworth. Albert picked up by Richardson. Richardson to Barber and Barber's goal and bound. And it's through. Richmond are in front. Richmond, four goals, two, 26. Geelong, three, three, 21. Great handball then. Take Wade out of the uh, play. Here's Eels kick, it's going goal, what it'll be, a goal straight through the centre. And uh, Geelong has scored their fourth goal. That's uh, three minutes into this uh, second quarter. The market punched away, the big punch too by Ganain, it goes back to Brown. Brown's kick is going goal with Brown, and it's through for the fifth goal for Richmond. A good goal to Brown. That's uh, his second, and he puts it through for five goals, five. A total of 35 points for Geelong, 4-3, 27. And uh, 30 yards out directly in front moves in it's a goal all right and it's level pegging here at uh, the mcg in the grand final richmond 5 5 35 geelong 5 5 35 it comes to hard hard over to ronaldson was good football ronaldson's kicked it the goal it didn't go very high but it's through and richmond are six goals eight a total here of 44 points to geelong five. right down to ganane at full forward and ganane mark beautiful mark by patty ganane and he's uh, five, six yards out from goal, directly in front. Now, Ganane couldn't miss this one. He missed an easy one about uh, 15, 20 yards out before, but I don't think he'll make the same mistake this time. Thank you, he's only five Paddy, yards out in front. Comes in, favours a punt kick, and it's through the centre. Lovely goal. Kick by Paddy Ganane of Richmond. And Richmond now moving. Playing 24 minutes. There's the shot by Wade. Straight through the centre, and it's another goal to the big cap. So there we go. That's another goal, two Geelong, they go on now to six goals, six. In the middle of two players there, Brown was waiting in behind, but half now, 35 to 40 or 35 yards out from goal, that's all he'd be. And on a 45 degree angle, moving in, kicking towards the scoreboard end, the railway end of the MCG moves in. There's the shot, it's a deliberate one, he's usually pretty accurate. And on this occasion, there's no mistake, and through the centre it goes for another goal to Richmond. That puts their eighth on the board. That'll make them eight twice. He'll go for the kick now, gets it eventually, down towards full forward, over the head of Ganane. Here's an opportunity, it goes through to Barry Richardson, into the goal square, and has put it straight through the centre. No mistake, he played that very cleverly, staying out of the bounce of the ball, waited for it to come to him, ran into the unguarded goal, and the back line down to the ground. Sherrick goes for the hand pass out to Goggin. Goggin for goal! And this put it through for full points. A very important goal, as you heard Harry say a moment ago. And we see Geelong's eighth goal on the board. Eight goals, six, 54, 10 points the difference. There by, there by Gareth Andrews. Plays on, tears his way through. They're attacking down to the goal square. That's going to be possibly touched through, or is it no, through for goal. goal? It's a goal, it was missed. And there's the second one, Geelong coming back like firing the feed. And it's going to Wade. Wade is going to be put on a pretty severe angle, but he's uh, five yards out, seven yards out from goal at a pretty severe angle. He runs around, kicks it on its way. He's gold. Geelong has hit the front. Geelong at 10-6, 66. Three goals to Wade. Richmond dying about 15 to 20 yards and put it straight into the well into the tummy of Doug Wade and he's now well within kicking distance moves in it's a drop kick and looks as though it could be on line the goal umpire putting the fingers up another goal to Geelong and they've gone on now to 11 goals 6 11 6 72 8 points in right down towards center half forward and up went Hart in front of Walker and Hart for the Tigers has taken a mark it's on its way, it's a glorious kick, it's going to make the distance, and also direction, a magnificent goal for the Tigers, one they needed to lift them, 10-10-70, Geelong 11-6-70. Well that ball was swung by Mitchell then on his uh, left boot, and Hines was the opportunist there on his own to take the mark. There's his drop kick, drop kicking towards goal, it's a beautiful goal, 
Goal umpire doesn't move. Geelong 12, 7, 79. Nine points in front of Richmond. 10, 10, 70. And the breeze, if anything, uh, slightly... Slight. Short pass to Sherrick, and Sherrick is marked. Uh, Sherrick's mark on the half-forward flank uh, towards the centre half-forward position. And that was great play by uh, Ryan. Ryan, the winning move again, uh, pulled last week to centre half-forward. He went for the hand pass to Eels. Eels found Sherrick. And now Sherrick's looking for the goals, and he's found them. Let's go for another goal. And Geelong are 6 their 6 for the quarter. They're 13 goals, 7. That's a total of... 771 to Geelong, 13785. Here's Brown. Moving in. There's the shot straight through the centre. No mistake about it. And he's put it through for the uh, the 11th uh, goal on the board for Richmond. They go on now. That should be 11-11. That'll make them 77 points. It goes into the centre. There it goes in the direction of uh, Barrett. Tried to do too much. He's lost it too. Marshall goes to the ground. Rosnow back to judgment. Goes back. A line-up shot by Barrett. Straight through the centre. And full points. And that was lost there by two players. Marshall, Barrett. Yes, it was the Tigers' day, their first premiership for 24 years and the club's sixth flag. Let's hope that this recording of the highlights of the broadcast by 3KZ brings back many happy memories for football fans for years to come. 1967, Richmond, Victorian Football League Premier. Not Asian for football news, 1183 KZ.